Assalamu alaikum everyone, edition, ex-edition here, Sabastad here, and uh, today the, um, I don't know whether we should call it good news or bad news, but the final report of flight PK8303, Pakistan International Airlines, which crashed on 22nd of May, 2020, and uh, the whole crew members, and 91 people uh, gave their lives. Uh, there were two survivors and uh, eight people on the ground were injured <coughs> and um, this happened in the city of Karachi the aircraft took off from Lahore airport and was bound to land in Karachi and uh, the whole flight time was about an hour and a few minutes and then it crashed at around 2 46 p.m pakistan standard time so the final report is of 180 pages mm, i think it's a better report than previous reports, only three of the reports of Pakistani air crashes have come out, and this was the lengthiest one. I mean, the, in terms of uh, amount of words used. I've gone through the first 30 pages uh, in which the synopsis and uh, the timeline of what happened when was given. So keep in mind that there was an initial report in, uh, in 2020, the same year, in the month of October or November, after four or five months. And this aircraft is a very, um, this air crash is still very important for Pakistan International Airline because after that, the airline went down because of uh, the aviation minister, Mr. Ulam Sarwar Khan, <clears throat> that time of uh, during the tenure of Mr. Ex Prime Minister Imran Khan Niazi. Uh, he made a statement about the PIA pilots that one third of the PIA pilots are having fake essences and PIA went down. But for that, until to the day, uh, we are not allowed to fly into the European route, which was 70% of the whole revenue of PIA, and PIA got doomed for that one. And uh, the advantage was taken by uh, some, again, uh, that's political, so I will not go into the details. First of all, my condolences to the families who lost their beloved ones in this air crash. So a report has come out now, final report, and um, I will talk about uh, I'm not. This is my first video on, on this issue because I'm going to make a series of the videos about this video. I'm just going to go quickly through what they said. So we have to keep that in mind that what this final report says now, because this is final. So nothing can be changed. Initial report, I will compare initial report with the final report in my next video, which is going to be in, in a day or two. Because I just got the report in this, uh, uh, I think, four, three, four hours ago through my course mates. And... Uh, when I got the report, I just went through a few pages because we discussed that among each other and there were a lot of discrepancies which I pointed out. So when, the, when they sent the report to me, they said, well, all your questions are going to be answered in this one. Well, I don't believe that, for instance, because all these reports are made to, you know, uh, send a perception and not taking the blame. Uh, in Pakistani society, no one takes the blame for anything. We will put the blame on others. We will not take the blame on our, ourselves. So I'm not, not, I'm not going to the end of the report, the first 29 to 30 pages in which it has been shown what has happened. So I'll go quickly to let the, let the, let my subscribers and my, and all those who view the videos know that how they have manipulated things in first 30 pages even. So first few pages are just a, I mean, the, 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 the contents table, then <clears throat> telling the terminologies, what kind of the uh, abbreviations they're using, what do they mean? Because if you, they start putting everything, all the full phrases, then the report is going to be like 360 pages long, maybe. So they put abbreviations like first from officers is termed as FO, and the captain, the flying pilot, is termed as uh, FP, and then so on. So well, I will try to be just for the layman. Now, let's get to the report. So now, a few things which are clear now that when the, the initial descent to join uh, Karachi Airport for runway 25L, uh, it was initiated by the first officer, Mr. Usman. And, um, and uh, let me tell you in a clear way that in this report, the blame would be put on first officer. I will tell you why. In the, in, in the initial report, all the blame was put on the captain, Captain Sajad Gold. But in this report, I can see the intention is to shift the blame from the captain to the first officer who was relatively junior. Mr. Usman was uh, enrolled in 2011 and this was 2020. So he had nine years of service, a few thousand uh, hours on um, all the all his flying experience and on recording or not. Yes, it is being recorded. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> Mr. 
so small really here the, the final descent now from 10,000 feet they have to go to the joining point and descend down to uh, 3,000 feet and then join the final gliding approach to the runway 25 left now here we have to know that something happened here they were hot and high for sure no, we don't know the reasons because no no calls have been put up. Of course, it's not public, so that's the investigation team supporting them. Uh, so when they started this uh, descent, and when they were going towards the, at around seven thousand feet, the tower calls the ADC on hotline. Now we need to know ADC. The air traffic controller, he sits in an office with walls and windows. He has no direct visual with the runway. And he has a machine in front of him which shows the blips. And according to that one, he sees where the aircraft is and where the aircraft is not. But the tower, on the other hand, Karachi Airport, is sitting in a glass uh, windowed kind of tower and has binoculars and all the stuff and can see the aircraft within five nautical miles clearly so now the tower at about now this time is according to the the aviational standard time so at about 9 31 0 9 31 hours he calls the adc and tells them they are hot and high so the adc guy says okay i will give them a give them an orbit which is very normal if you're coming for approach you can't land so what do you do you make a circle and then during the circle, or during the orbit, you lose height and you'll probably you'll be on them. But here they showed that uh, the first officer, uh, the captain yelled at the first officer because, because they have to put everything in the flight plan, the holding pattern too. So all they need to do is push the button and the aircraft turns into the holding pattern by itself, losing height and coming back to the normal place and advance. But four times he yelled, hold it out, hold it out, hold it out, hold it out. Uh, you could see on the, on the report as well. So now the shift is, shift of blame is going to the first officer that he didn't make the flight plan correctly. Now we don't know about that one, but this has been released. And he's saying that in Urdu language, not in English. So the final report says in Urdu. So that means that someone told them what he's saying to the to the French uh, authorities, those who uh, helped uh, um, CAA, Civil Aviation Authority of Pakistan, and Pakistan International Airline conduct this uh, this inquiry, which took four years, by the way. So now it was his fault because he didn't have to fly planet. But anyhow, now once they reach to a certain height and a certain speed, the landing gears were lowered and they were fully down and intact within 13 seconds the report says that means all those who were saying the bullshit that they landed without the without the landing gears they forgot to lower the landing gears down they said shut up now because they did lower the landing gears now till the time the first officer is the flying pilot he's the fp and now when he's coming down the adc tells him again you are not um on the on the, on the on the on the right path height so go around not go around make an orbit try to come back and uh because they didn't have this autopilot orbit flight plan assumed so they continued on the approach once they reached to 2000 feet above ground level or before the touchdown at that time the first officer who was still the captain he realized that we can't make it that's the time when he told the captain, should we go around? Should we make an orbit? But now they have to do it manually. And by that time, all the autopilots were disengaged because of the low space down movement a lot, 13 degrees. And the rate of descent was around 6,800 feet per minute. So that's the time when the autopilots get disengaged. They got disengaged by 2,000 feet. The first officer still flying the plane, the aircraft, he pulled the gears up and he put the mm, auto thrust 
which it means that if your pitch up it's going to increase the power of your pitch down it's going to lower the power it's auto thrust so he put the aircraft in that configuration and that was the time when captain sajad he became the flying pilot and he said okay give it to me i have the controls now we are talking about 1100 feet from the touchdown two nautical miles away from the runway captain sajad now we don't have the calls call records in this final report as well captain sajad within i calculated 50 seconds now he's under the impression of landing the aircraft while the first officer is on orbiting or going around because he already initiated gears up now did they have conversation with each other we don't know no one told us there, there should have been because the sop is also what is the sop that before touchdown you confirm with the adc adc confirms with the tower that gears are down and clear to land so pilots normally before touchdown they or uh, long before the touchdown they give a call to the to the adc uh, confirm gear down uh, touching down in like t minus a lot of seconds and adc clears that one because it is touch in touch with the tower which can see the aircraft now it's, it's closer but no, nothing of that sort is available on the final report so continue now captain sajad is flying and all the calls are being now why captain sajad was not flying well because he was observing because he has to there were 13 different lights on and they have to unturn the lights to turn on position because turn off position because all these warnings were coming out mm, uh, high speed you know, flaps down at uh, higher speed gears down at higher speed and then low terrain warning and when you get the gears up then the aircraft says uh, this uh, auto type uh, which tip terrain warning it, it gets on gears were down so they did push the quietness in the in the cockpit so that they concentrate on the landing but again two different pilots have two different mindsets and that's what is being projected that's what they want us to believe that it's one of them there's of course in the end it's it's the pilots miscalculation once they touch down captain sajad's side stick uh, he was sitting on the left was fully nose down position it's a fly by wire so you don't have to go like down like this was fully down but the, the first officer his stick was two-third up means they were against each other but uh, on airbus it cancels and they get a resulting vector which was still pitched down so once the aircraft touched down without gears because captain sajad was trying to land the aircraft and he even applied full brakes oh no landing gears no brakes but he was under the impression that the gears are down he had no idea the gears were retracted up that's what we assume because the report doesn't say but the flying officer uh, the first officer he was under the impression to get a go round, and he already initiated at 2000 feet so all those who were saying that they touched it no so they touched down now let, let me tell you if the gears were not retracted up at 2000 feet they would have landed perfectly because the speed of the aircraft would have been lower because of the drag induced by the gears and they would have come down to the speed of 150 to 160 which is not that fast although it shouldn't be that fast it's plus 30 knots yet but still landable speed at even touching down at 4500 feet of the runway and then once they touched for 14 seconds they stayed on the runway skidding so there are four different marks on the runway and that's the time in the cockpit when uh, the first officer tells uh, captain sanjar to go around they go around now the report doesn't say clearly when they start to go up again into the air uh, one of the engine was not on the full it was at 16 percent of power and the other engine was at uh, 76 percent of power that was the report says so one engine had oil pressure leakage and dropped uh, the what you call uh, it had less power or stalled almost flamed out and once they were going up now the report says the uh, landing gear warning was off 
Now, they didn't tell us that someone got the gears up again, which were never, never retracted after the second attempt. Um, second attempt was when Captain Sagato controls, and he lowered the gears down, but they never came down because speed was too much. And Airbus has this, uh, this restrictions, limitations, that if you retract the gears down and you are above the, the, the limitation, the speed limitation, they, will, they won't come down. They will wait until you come down to that speed and then they will lower down. Otherwise, they would be taken by the wind shear and then they would be broken by sweat. So there are many safety me mechanisms. So the light was off. We don't know whether the gears were retracted back up to up or they came down because the speed was lower than you know, 150 knots. And uh, so, but later on, in, in the report, it says that they lowered the gears down again before going, coming for final approach when both the engines failed. So I think the gears were put to up position. So they were very vigilant about that. So they pulled the gears up, climbed up to a certain height. They couldn't maintain 3,000 feet. They stayed at around 2,000 feet. And now the report says that the CVR recording is not available because the engine failed and the electrical system failed. So they had no cockpit voice recording after four minutes of flight so after that and they have a disclaimer over there that we don't know we are just gonna be on speculations so rest is everything is speculations this one more thing that uh, the adc guy called on the landline uh, so the tower guy called on the landline after the aircraft touched down and went back into the air and asked on the landline first time you called on hotline where they're hot and high second time you called on the landline to ask the pilots if the gears are down. <clears throat> if he was in the office, he would have seen through his binoculars because the aircraft was not a, very far away from the tower and from the runway. It just took off. But he is that because he was not at, the, at, at present there. We might be offering his Zuma prayers. And ADC guys sent him text messages, you know, on his cell phone that, oh, we have an emergency. The aircraft has hit, blah, 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 whatever, you know. And maybe he put someone non-professional person, maybe a cleaner, a janitor, to view because there was only one aircraft coming down. And that guy, when he would know because, you know, people, they know how to operate these things, although they're working for a long time. So he might have pushed the button and told the ANC that, okay, I saw the aircraft landing with the fire on it. And those have been erased, those records, they're not there. But eventually, in the end, what has happened that they declared we made an emergency and they told that we're turning left, we're getting into the, we are already established on runway 25 left and we're gonna land. But there was one more thing which is corporate, but again, putting the blame on the first officer because the captain Sajjad is saying, now see, once, once we're landing without the flaps, the gears came down, there's a drag, so aircraft is gonna go down. So once he's turning into, for the final landing, uh, the flaps were not, pulled down, or not supposed to be pulled down, because you don't have enough height. They were at about 700 feet from ground. And the report uh, influences that the first officer did put the flaps down. And Captain Sajal was saying, no, no, no flaps, no flaps. But he put the, and there was a chime, a, a, a bell ringing which confirms that flaps were put down. So if the flaps were put down, the aircraft would have been gone into more drag. And that's why the miscalculation, if no flaps, only the gears down, they would have landed because they needed only 50, to 50 feet above ground to cover that residential area, to go through past that residential area and land into the, into the, onto the runway. But because of the flaps down, the aircraft had the drag sank quicker and that's why it got hit right before the mm, getting into the threshold of the runway which is again why those tall buildings were put there in the first place but anyhow this is what particularly has happened so far in, 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 the, in the final report in the final report i've been i'm playing on, on on the side of the screen you can see it so this is my first video and from tomorrow onwards everyone is going to shout that it was the mistake of the first officer throughout captain sajad has been exonerated as, as i see in the in the report 
and the tower guy has not been put blame on at all because he was absent from his duty but no one mentioned him and the ADC guy who didn't call any of the emergency procedures to be called if the plane is coming for a belly landing nope. so I guess the, the tower guy is more powerful in, in, in the sense that his, his family, his relatives are in higher positions in military that's why he's not blamed but he that's negligence of high priority if he would have he would have been in office if he would have seen this aircraft coming without the gears even from 2000 feet above ground level he would have he should have and he, this is his job to inform the adc to inform the captain who's struggling to get this plane down he would have gone round on time because he, all he needed to do was pitch up power in turbo and go around but this incident this tower guy has to be blamed thank you very much wait for the next video the comparison with first report see you